So I hesitate to make this video because I don't want to be condescending to my viewers. But what seems obvious to me, I guess, isn't always as clear to everyone else. So anytime anyone talks about sexual assault and consent, the topic of alcohol and drugs to a lesser extent gets brought up. There's this question of the ability or non-ability to provide consent when you're intoxicated. This is one of the reasons that people often dispute the often cited statistic that one in five women have been raped or sexually assaulted. Because the studies that include that include people who were unable to provide consent because they were drunk or intoxicated. And I guess people think the implication is that being drunk absolves people of their responsibility. Okay, so apparently what happened is that one day some crazy person said that you are unable to provide consent when you're drunk. So if you have sex with someone when they're drunk, you've essentially raped them. Now personally, I hear people accuse others of making this argument way more than I actually hear people making this argument, but I'll take you guys' word for it that this is an actual thing that a lot of people believe. So yeah, apparently someone said that one day, so now anytime anyone mentions the concept concept of being too intoxicated to provide consent, we go down this obnoxious straw man of a rabbit hole where it's assumed every time that the argument is, if you're drunk, you can't provide consent. Look, only crazy people and or people who have never had a drink before say that. You can obviously consent to sex when you're drunk, just like you can consent to playing a game of pool or consent to eating a hamburger at the bar. Can you be too drunk to provide consent? Well, yes, of course. These are pictures of people who are most likely too drunk to provide sex sexual consent. If you have sex with any of these people, that would probably be rape. Even though it was likely their own decision to get this drunk. Even if they previously consented, it would still be rape because they clearly cannot provide ongoing consent. Now, of course, this might be honest to you because these people are clearly unconscious. But this is where we have to be honest and stop bullshitting. Now, I've had many drinks in my lifetime, so I feel a bit confident in this area. Sometimes you're buzzed, but you can still act relatively normally and make smart decisions. Sometimes you're pretty drunk and have noticed lower inhibitions and you might make some regrettable decisions. Sometimes you're straight up shit house and completely oblivious to the world around you and you're just unable to be a person correctly. If you have sex with someone in that third category, I think we can make a strong argument for rape. Imagine if a guy snuck into a woman's house and just jumped on top of her while she was lying in bed. But imagine that the woman thought that it was her husband so she went along with it and was into it. Until of course the point where she realized that it wasn't her husband. Is that rape? I think it is. Even though the woman in action went along with it, she was unable to provide consent to this guy because she was oblivious to the reality of the situation. I think it's a similar thing when you're really hammered from drinking a lot. It's very possible to be so drunk that your interpretation of reality is no longer correct. I've been there before, personally, and obviously there's no 100% steadfast rule about how drunk you have to be before this happens. That's why when they interview people on these sex surveys, they ask questions like, have you ever been too intoxicated to provide consent. Like all the people that dispute these statistics, it seems like their implication is anytime someone answers yes to that question, they're lying. Which I think is unfair at best and dishonest and bigoted at worst. So the next point is one that I think a lot of people are missing. Even if it's not rape, it's still fucked up. People act like the mission is to just brand as many people as rapists as we can. Like we get a point every time we call someone a rapist. No, the idea is to get people to stop being shitty to each other and to think about each other's feelings and to stop manipulating and taking advantage of people and to take people seriously when they've been attacked or harmed. Now, of course, for legal purposes, there needs to be a very standard and appropriate definition of rape so that justice can be appropriately served. But that's not really what I'm talking about in this video. Like, if you're a sexual predator and you're trying to find some kind of legal loophole so you don't get branded a rapist, I don't have sympathy for you. So if you take advantage of the fact that someone is drunk in order to get them to have sex with you, is that rape? Well, maybe it is in some context, and maybe in other contexts it's not. What I want you to understand is it's fucked up either way and you shouldn't do it. It's creepy and manipulative, and it can have lasting emotional effects on a person. Now, is the other person responsible for any actions that they take? Well, of course they are. That's why you still get in trouble if you drive drunk. Even though you're clearly not in your right mind, you still are responsible for your actions. But that doesn't make it not fucked up. That's the thing you guys are missing. And as a person who's had many drinks, 
drinks and also hung out with many drunk people, I have a hard time buying the fact that the average person can't tell when someone is too drunk to provide consent. Like 90% of the time, this should be very obvious. Now being accused of rape is very serious and if the argument is that people who have done completely nothing wrong are being called rapists, then that's a problem and I agree with that. But first of all, I wanna go ahead and just knock down this idea that all drunk sex is rape. First of all, I don't think most people make that argument in the first place. People who do make that argument are being ridiculous. And secondly, the idea that it's so hard to determine whether or not someone is too drunk or just a little bit too drunk, like I think that's very disingenuous. If two or more people get drunk together and agree to have sex with each other, that's fine. They're all responsible for their actions and even if it was consensual, they're still responsible for being decent human beings and caring about each other's feelings. And if you found that a consequence of you getting drunk is you unintentionally doing things that make other people feel shitty, you should consider not drinking. If you get somebody wasted just so they'll have sex with you when they otherwise wouldn't is that rape maybe but even if it isn't you're still a creepy piece of shit and I don't have that much sympathy for you if you get accused of being a sexual predator I just feel like the distinction is not that hard to see that's all I have to say about that <laughs>